Hello ladies and gents, it's Easyscape. A few days ago, on June 30th, 2019, Kavera HD Games, a Brazilian YouTube live streamer, was speedrunning Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories in the any% percent no RNG manipulation category. This was his first time speedrunning the game, so it was a massive surprise to everyone when he pulled out a 3 hour, 10 minute, and 38 second time, which would be a top 3 time on the leaderboards. Considering this was the no RNG manipulation category, that means in order to get a time like this, you would need to have a perfect combination of really good luck, as well as a ton of skill and good decision making. Not that it's impossible to get a good time with luck alone, but the worse your decision making is means the more luck that is required to make up for it. The world record holder for any percent with RNG manipulation is GFC, and in his opinion, Kavera isn't very experienced or knowledgeable about the game itself, and very consistently makes poor plays on almost every single duel. So the luck he was going to need was going to be insane. Which it was. For instance, getting good cards in this game comes from winning duels, and the most powerful card you can get is a Meteor Black Dragon. Getting this card in your deck will make each duel much, much easier and save a lot of time in the run. Also because certain cards are so powerful, speedrunners will sometimes farm wins off weaker duelists to unlock them. Kavera decided to farm for some of the cards himself, and you'll never guess which one for. The Meteor Black Dragon. Almost every top level Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memory speedrunner would never ever farm for a card like this, unless it was a last ditch effort to save a run. But Kavera just goes for it, and not even against the low meadow mage, which has the best drop rate for the card, but instead against Jono second, who has less than half the drop rate of low meadow mage. A bold strategy for sure, but it pays off as Kavera gets the Meteor Black Dragon after only his 8th duel, a 0.39% chance. Later on he also wins Beast Fangs from Shady with 0.98% odds, and Dragon Treasure from Isis with 1.5% odds in his first attempt each time. Well you may have been able to guess from the title that this run was not performed legitimately. Not because of the insane luck that Kavera received, because that technically could have happened to anybody, but there were some serious telltale signs that this was a cheated run. The first giveaway is that upon winning certain duels like the one with Shady, Kavera won the card Beast Fangs, and the card ID above it was 129 which is actually the ID for the card Namariko, which is a different card in Shady's drop table instead of the ID 308, which belongs to Beast Fangs. Also, when he wins Dragon Treasure, you can see another number behind the ID that normally isn't there. This is something that nobody has ever seen in the game before and only happens when using something like Game Shark or Cheat Engine, and there are several occurrences of this happening throughout the run. To explain the second sign of cheating, we have to understand how Yu Gi Oh! Forbidden Memories generates randomness, because once you understand how it works, you can start recognizing patterns. Basically, everything in Forbidden Memories is decided by what seed you perform a certain action on, and what your seed number is at certain times. Before starting the duel, you can look at the cards in someone's deck, look how they sort the deck, and then by looking at the order they draw their cards on, you can figure out exactly which seed number the duel ends on, which also determines which card you win. So by looking at all of this, we can figure out exactly which card should be won after every duel. And if someone wins a card other than what card they should win given the seed number, then that means some type of hack or cheat has been used. And in Kavera's run, his drops do not match what cards he should be winning. An example in his run is when he fights Tiana. During his fight, he should win Sinister Serpent at the end of the duel, however, instead he wins Fake Trap. And one last time, like I said before, the only way something like this ever occurs is when the game is modified in some way. As for the third piece of evidence, we'll get to this in a little bit. After Kavera achieved his third place time, he submitted it to the leaderboards, to which it was reviewed and rejected for the reasons I shared above. Following this, a reddit thread was posted to our speedrun to make everyone aware of Kavera's cheating, as people taking advantage of the popularity of our hobby has been a huge issue in our community for a long time. GFC, the world record holder I spoke of earlier, responded to the reddit post in Kavera's run on his YouTube channel, sharing his thoughts and the evidence he collected. So what is Kavera's response to all of this? All on the same day, he firstly denies that his run is faked. Who would have guessed? At the start of his stream he saw that GFC was also live, so he encouraged his entire chat to go to his live stream to flame him, and directly linked GFC's stream. GFC was instantly hit with several hundreds of accounts, spamming his chat and leaving dislikes on his stream. GFC had no idea where this was coming from because like I said before, he only made the two comments on Reddit and YouTube, and it wasn't like he was the only person making those comments. He wasn't even playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories that stream, and it wasn't until 7 hours into his live stream when the spam started. Kavera must have noticed that GFC was a world record holder, and also a much smaller channel. So he took advantage of the fact that he would essentially be helpless in this situation. In response, GFC decided to prove on stream that Kavera's run was indeed fake by showing the discrepancies with the Beast Fangs ID not being correct. He did manage to change a few people's minds, but Kavera's fans were relentless. Every time GFC streamed, a couple of people would come by to harass him, but he insisted that he wanted to be left alone, banned them, and moved on. 
But Caveira raided him again, and GFC had to ban hundreds of people to again tell them that he didn't care, and that he wanted to stream normally. But Caveira still had yet to give in. Several of GFC's videos now have hundreds of dislikes and comments including his latest stream, which now has over 500 dislikes, and all he ever did was make those two comments and showed on his stream proof of Caveira cheating, and refused to get any more involved. This of course was the case before Caveira falsely copyrighted GFC when he showed the video of Caveira cheating. Yes, the short 20 seconds or so of footage that GFC shared of Caveira's stream on his stream got striked despite falling under fair use. Because of this, GFC can no longer stream on YouTube, which is his main source of income, until the strike is resolved. And if he were to receive two more strikes, he would lose his channel entirely. So in order to understand why Caveira would do all of this, we first need to understand the type of person he is. Caveira Games is a YouTube channel with 28,000 subscribers, but this isn't actually Caveira's first channel. Almost exactly one year ago, he was using a different channel with 200,000 subscribers. One day while he was live streaming, a girl stopped by his stream and said, Oh we, premier base, no canal. Or in English, hey, first time on the channel. After receiving this message, Caveira decided to sexually harass the girl, telling her that one that says a wee wants the dick, and raised his camera to make more erotic gestures. This was all in front of hundreds of people, who all decided to play along with the joke and harassed her as well. Allegedly, YouTube took this complaint seriously and shut down his original channel. However, there was a rumor amongst his viewers that it was actually his ex-girlfriend who deleted the channel, but we cannot know for sure. I'm leaning towards believing that this was due to harassment, because even if a YouTube channel is accidentally deleted, it can still be reinstated. If I had to guess, I think he blamed his ex so he could both A, let fewer people know about his harassment or what his original ban was for, and B, to shift the blame to the ex who probably didn't have a platform to defend herself. And it also really doesn't make sense for him to be so obsessed with this victim he harassed over a year ago if nothing happened to him as a result, and we 100% know that she did file a complaint. I mean, just a few days ago, I decided to check out his live stream because I wanted to see what he was all about. One of the first things he did was put on a shirt that read a Wii on it, making fun of that girl, to which the entire chat chimed in with. He's also selling this merch on his YouTube channel for profit. But not only that, he also got the victim's face and name tattooed on him after his ban. Yes, literally, tattooed. I've been trying to keep the victim's identity secret this entire time, but I think it's important to show the tattoo just so you all understand who we are dealing with. Please do not seek out additional information about this person, they would like to be left out of this. Caveira breaks YouTube's terms of service all the time. Besides false copyright strikes and harassment, he regularly flashes his entire ass on stream for big donations. And although the implications are probably different, this is literally the same thing as being a cam model, which is completely fine to do, but Caveira, you cannot do that on YouTube, even with age restriction on. If you want to do porn, you gotta do it somewhere else. Oh. Looks like he already has. I mean, he literally has a pre-recorded clip of him turning around and showing his ass and plays it on stream every once in a while. Honestly, I've never considered having a hotkey on my computer to show my ass on livestream, but Caveira, you have inspired me. You're a true innovator. I wish I could say that there wasn't anything more, but unfortunately, the worst has yet to come. While I was surfing around some of his unlisted streams, I found that at the start of one of them, he was on some sort of not safe for work website for YouTube videos and was watching some videos on stream. In one of the videos, the title makes it seem like the girl might only be 12 years old, to which Caveira responds, 12 years? And having an ass like that? It's not possible. Let me see what it's about. Then once he figures out that she isn't 12, which by the way, just because you know someone isn't 12, doesn't mean that they are of legal age. Then he shows the video on his stream. Caveira does everything shy of nutting on his keyboard for 20 minutes, including screaming, look at this, look at it motherfucker, and he swings his arm as if to slap the girl. I mean, he really watched two videos that were at most five minutes long each for over 20 minutes, and even brought what looks like to be his grandmother into the room to watch the videos, and later on some other people in his house, all while live to hundreds of people on YouTube. I also have a clip of someone messaging him what he announces to be CP, and Caveira's response to receiving it is laughter, and additionally laughs when a moderator in his chat offers to send the links out to people in the chat if they donated to the stream. I mean, this dude does some really weird stuff on his stream. Just yesterday, I tuned into his stream, and there was a video of what looks like to be his mother shooting him in the ass with an airsoft gun. Also, there was an entire live stream of what it looks to be him talking with a stripper while she dances, and pretty much only that. No video games whatsoever. I mean, I've only been working on this video for two days, and this is everything that GFC and I were able to find in that time. And we don't even speak Portuguese. I can only imagine what all else he's done on other social media and on his other previous channels as well as what things he might be doing off-stream, if these are the kinds of things that he does while he's on it. 
Following the aftermath of Cabrera's first run, he decided to speedrun the game again to prove his legitimacy. This time all of the card IDs matched up correctly, and he achieved a new personal best of 3 hours, 5 minutes, and 20 seconds. 5 minutes quicker than his run from 2 days prior, and a second place time on the leaderboards. Again, this run was rejected, and now Cabrera wants proof that this run was also cheated, and insists that it is also legit. In efforts to prove his innocence, he decided to show his emulator game files, which exposed that he downloaded both GameShark and Codebreaker days before he did his first run, and the files were placed in his PlayStation 1 emulator folder, which leads to the third piece of evidence of Cabrera cheating. And just because the card IDs actually match up this time, that doesn't mean this run is legit. Since like I said before, we can actually check the seed whenever he starts a duel to figure out exactly which cards he should receive. This time Cabrera decides to farm for Meteor Black Dragon again, but this time from the Low Meadow Mage instead of Jono Second, so at least he's learning. But when he received Meteor Black Dragon, based on the seed number, he was actually supposed to receive Weather Control. We can also look at the other cards he received as proof, like when he received Mammoth Graveyard from the Low Meadow Mage, when he was supposed to receive Jinzo number 7, based on his seed number. Cabrera's main defense here is why would he cheat to receive a bad card like Mammoth Graveyard? That wouldn't make any sense. And this is true. But when you modify the game's drop chances, even if it's making it so one individual card like Meteor Black Dragon has a higher chance of dropping, it will still make it so that all of the drops are not what they should have been, even if the cards are good or bad. So we can confidently say that this second run is 100% cheated. After all this happened, GFC compiled all of the information and made a Reddit post to our speedrun, which amassed over 3,000 upvotes and also meant a fair bit of backlash to Cabrera, which prompted him to reach out to GFC to let him know that he didn't want to start a war. Interesting, you didn't mind picking on him when he was a small YouTube and Twitch live streamer, but once you realize how big our community was, now you want to bury the hatchet? Well, that's not even true either, because it wasn't even 10 minutes after sending that email that Cabrera started making fun of GFC yet again, and went back on livestream talking about he could have gotten GFC 3 strikes on his channel if he wanted to. He also said things like, I've never even bowled before, yet I still got a strike, continuing to make fun of GFC. I guess it makes sense that Cabrera would know so much about YouTube's terms of service after losing his last channel, and now on the verge of losing this one. I mean, let's see if we can count all of the violations on one hand. Sexual harassment. Cyberbullying. Brigading, falsely copyright striking, ban evading, getting naked for donations. And maybe the CP he was sent on his phone wasn't real. We won't know because we couldn't see it, and honestly, I'm happy about that. But he still acted as if it were, and simply laughed at it. And moderators in his chat offered to send the links out if the chat donated money. And to be honest, just because he didn't say it himself, he still encouraged the behavior by laughing at it and allowing his moderators to say these things in his chat. If someone came by my live stream and saw I had an extremely racist chat and I wasn't doing anything about it but I also wasn't participating in it, I would still be held responsible for what was taking place. And the same applies to Cabrera. So I had a few goals when it came to making this video. You would have thought that exposing a speedrunner for cheating would have been reason enough, but that's not really my thing. I'd rather make videos that uplift this community, to teach more people about our culture. But I am the type of person that will stand up when I know somebody is being wrong. In this case, a member of our community was harassed and left jobless, all because someone else decided to cheat in a speedrun, and they were targeted because they happened to be the world record holder. So my main goal was to make sure that Cavera didn't get away with any of this, and that hopefully action would be taking place on his YouTube channel to make sure that he could stop monetizing his harassment. My second goal was to give support to GFC in a time where he needed the most and to help him get back on his feet. I'd really appreciate it if you guys didn't waste your time harassing Cavera after watching this video, because it isn't going to solve anything and just makes matters worse. Instead, let's just let things take their course and everything should come out alright. We still have no idea how long until GFC's copyright strike will be lifted, so to help him make up for it, I loaded this video with ads, and I'm going to give a big portion of this video's earnings to GFC to keep him on his feet. I would also encourage all of you to take that negative energy you have towards Cabrera and put it into positive energy towards GFC. If any of you are interested in learning more about Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories, or any of the other games that he runs, just hop in his chat and ask, and I'm sure he'll do more than help you out. GFC has been through a lot in this past week, and I'm sure the last thing he wants to talk about is this whole debacle. He's still able to stream on Twitch, which I believe he'll be doing until he can also stream on YouTube, which he usually does at the same time. So follow him there at GFC underscore, as well as GFC underscore on YouTube. Direct links will be in the description. I really can't think of a better way to get back at Kavera than supporting GFC. Lastly, I want to end this video with a message to Kavera, because I know you're watching this. I just want to let you know that anything that happens to you after this video is posted is entirely your fault. And whether you accept it or not, you're going to take responsibility for your actions. You can't blame the victim you harassed over a year ago, you can't blame your ex-girlfriend, you can't blame GFC, and you can't blame me. You can only blame yourself.
I hope that you can walk away with this and at least understand why people are upset and what you did was wrong. But I'm not sure if you'll ever be able to admit that you were in the wrong. So in that case, I was hoping you'd leave a little tattoo room for my face. I was actually thinking maybe a good spot could be on the right ass cheek and then GFC could be on the left one so that anytime you get a big donation, you can just drop that ass and subliminally harass us for the rest of your life. Whatever you want to do. I mean, just to make this video, GFC and I had to look at a lot of ass. Can we just get a couple likes on this video ju just for doing that? Alright guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully I never have to make one of these videos again. If you guys enjoyed any of the speedrunning explanations I shared in this video, that's more in line with what this channel is actually about. And if you're interested in learning more about a plethora of different games, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's the best way to get back at Kavera. Probably. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, also follow me on Twitch and Twitter. That will really show him. Alright guys, I'm kidding and done chilling out. More speedrunning related content will be dropping soon, and as always, I hope you have a beautiful life. Sub 120! Sub 120!